Um, I, I'd like to continue this theme um, and talk about how we address, how we collect the evidence. Um, uh, what would I do? Oh, right. Um, just to recap, why are we interested in studying this question? Um, there are an increasing number of people moving from urban areas to cities, um, and the demographic change uh, really uh, necessitate that we focus on the elderly population because they're more frail. Um, and so this brings to the question, what is the relationship between urban design and health, um, focusing on the issue of age-friendly and health-promoting environment? Uh, the previous speaker referred to an uh, integrated framework. Um, uh, this is my version of the integrated framework. You want to look at outcomes at population, individual, and perhaps cellular levels to get your research grants. We don't want to just focus on mortality because you could argue that this is, if you have increased life expectancy, it's because the obstetricians and pediatricians are doing a good job. We want to focus on frailty. So this is accumulation of deficits. And there are factors impacting aging well outcomes. The group of personal factors, which we tend to focus on, which is diet, physical activity, uh, socioeconomic factors, and psychological factors, but not so much on environmental factors. So this is neighborhood environment, open spaces, air pollution, and climate. Now, um, just to show you, in Hong Kong, although we um, top the table for global health indicators, uh, you, you can see, if you look at these maps, they're temporal and spatial changes. If, if uh, red is bad and green is good, this is looking at hip fracture case fatality. This is looking at hip fracture incidence. We're improving, but certainly wide district variations. This is uh, stroke case fatality, and this is um, stroke incidence. And uh, you can immediately appreciate a difference in patterns between he hemorrhagic and ischemic stroke. Uh, hemorrhagic stroke doesn't seem to be going anywhere with time, but uh, ischemic stroke seems to be improving. So why is that? These are research questions that we need to ask. And in order to, um, to do that, you need uh, money, right? Um, it's, it's very difficult to establish a direct causal relationship that previous speaker referred to. Um, so. Uh, we can only draw inferences from associations and you want to collect data on as many confounding factors that impact on health, environment being one of them, uh, in order to go deeper into addressing the research question. Um, and the um, relevant factors, uh, uh, why do we need to do that? Just to emphasize, we need to design our living environment to promote healthy lifestyle. We need city planning for easy access uh, to transport care, shops, and so on, and planning buildings and roads with awareness of the impact of climate, heat, cold, noise, pollution, open spaces. And because of the aging population, there's a whole issue around special design for elder housing and residential care homes for the elderly, uh, and then neighborhoods. Now, um, as an example of how we can delve further into uh, analyzing spatial variations in health outcomes, um, we um, opportunistically look at a data set of people aged 65 and years and over, and we look at various outcome indicators other than mortality. We look at frailty. And we collect data about lifestyle, socioeconomic, um, and also the district. And we look at the uh, associations and make some conclusions about direct and, and in indirect relationships. And using this pathway, I think all you, all you need to look at is this. This is the outcome measure we use, the frailty of your population. And uh, th these boxes are all the um, personal factors, dietary quality, alcohol, smoking, physical activity, socioeconomic, where you live, we, we don't, um, at this stage, we don't uh, analyze what that means. And you can see that, of course, where you live impact on all these things, right? But uh, this particular line shows that uh, it has a direct impact on frailty. So this is independent of your diet, your 
of, of alcohol smoking and physical activity level and independent of socioeconomic. So um, it doesn't help to just focus on raising people's income. You've got to look at your living environment. Um, so, so this is really a summary of um, what I said just now. Then the next question is, what is the district, uh, what are the district factors that impact the outcome? Um, uh, and to do that, you need to go down into the district to look at the neighborhoods. You, you can look at social support, you can look at facilities, safety, pollution, etc. Many things you can look at. Uh, incidentally, uh, we talked about density. Is there a limit to it? Um, we, with, with this data set, we, we looked at telomere length. The longer it is, the longer your life expectancy. Uh, more disease you have, the shorter it is. Uh, and basically, this is to show that in Sha Tin, if you use that as a reference district, all these crowded areas that uh, Professor Yip referred to, you have shorter telomeres. Uh, Sha Tin is a, a new uh, planned district built on reclaimed land with uh, rivers and harbor views and so on, Very, lots of open spaces. So maybe there's something, maybe we should pursue that. Now, if we go down to the neighborhood, I uh, chose two uh, contrasting areas, Sai Kung and Sham Shui Po. Uh, this is a poorer, denser area, this is more open. And this is Sham Shui Po, and this is Sai Kung, low rise, village houses, a lot of open spaces. And we looked at the, these are some of the characteristics we looked at, uh, accessibility, safety, pollution, amenities, medical, social facilities, and so on. And we particularly focus on one, uh, walkability. Um, um, and then we relate that to health-related quality of life. And we, we show that there is a relationship. And walkability in Hong Kong may be different to how other, uh, uh, it's defined in other countries. Um, uh, we basically, we look at obstruction to walkways and safety to walk around neighborhood at night. Okay. So this is a narrow definition to the international one. Um, and you're supposed to be able to tell which is more walkable and which is not, but maybe many of you can't. <laughs> um, this is the only slide that is good, and here's obstruction and, and steep stairs and so on. And uh, there's age-related uh, difference in what people would like to see. The older people, walkability is most important, whereas leisure and social facilities are not too important. Um, so to conclude, um, neighborhood design impacts on health of aging populations. The magnitude of impact could be equivalent to that from lifestyle and socioeconomic factors. There's a dearth of research in this area which requires cross-disciplinary research. And the research questions we need to focus on, we need to collect evidence on the interaction between health and environment using quantitative and qualitative studies because these facts influence policy. And we, perhaps we can utilize existing networks of contrasting cities and intra-city differences to address these questions and examine subgroup differences, uh, age, culture, ethnicity, and so on. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.